Charlie Brown, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> In a uh, motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Approval of the minutes for June 10th. Make a motion to approve the minutes for June 10th, 2024. I'll second it. Then moved and seconded. Any discussion? Yes. Mary Lee? Um, first page. Citizen comments, the last line, the board thanked the Lions Club for their should be time and effort and will do all they can to uh, get the sign installed. So I want to add their time and will at the end of that sentence. And... Our unlicensed dog report. Um, <coughs> Mike Jones said it is a civil violation. I put it is it before the is. And then what isn't in there is we, I believe, voted on having telephone calls made, especially to people that had several dogs. Did I make that up? I don't know if we actually made a motion or if we just agreed mm -hmm. to do that. It was just, I, I don't know if it was a motion, it was a discussion, because I the next day I talked to Nedra about it, saying, asked her if um, Joanne would be able to take on some extra time and make those phone calls, if, if we couldn't get hold of Chris. Okay, I'm not sure if it was a motion, that. but I knew we talked about it. Now down on Parson Hill sidewalk, we've got the next to the last line, it says, all voted in favor, motion carried five to zero. Then the next motion, it only was four to zero. Now I know Bob came in late, but if we have a five to zero, then it doesn't seem the four for zero should be after. From then on, they should be all five, right? Yes, I wasn't smart enough to unmute myself. Yeah, I kept punching the star button instead of the pound button or vice versa <laughs> or whatever. So I, kept hollering, I kept hollering. I kept hollering. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, <laughs> obviously, we could not. You never answered me. <laughs> yeah, there was there were several that he didn't vote on. That was me. Oh, so all these that are four are okay. They need to be four. They're not five. Okay. I was wondering if it was because you couldn't get through or something, and it no. turns out that's the case. I listened to all of it. Yeah, that was the case. I hadn't been drinking Excuse that me. night either. Can I, I believe. Can that. I interject in there? Certainly. Um, I think Bob came in on the power box on the town green discussion is when he joined in. Was it before that, Bob, or no? No, I think it's about right. I heard Mary talking about that exclusively. Yeah, there, there was there were some times that when they made I'm, I I know, made notes that there was times that you didn't chime in on whether you, when they asked for the when they called for the motion. I wasn't. Yeah. So the first so, so the first one should have been four zero as well then. Yes. That's what, I, that's what I'm saying. I think that first one in the in the um, Parsons Hill project should be four zero, not five. And then he came in on the, the power box discussion. Okay. That's when his number showed up on the screen. Okay, thank you, Allison. So you can make that correction? Yep. Okay. He's on it. Anything else? No. So I was just on the Parsons Hill sidewalk project, second line down. Wasn't it five feet wide and two inches deep, the sidewalk, not four feet? Pretty confident that's correct. That you're correct. Yeah. So there needs to be change there, and then in the next sentence also, instead of four feet wide and two inches deep, it should be five feet wide and two inches deep, and then four feet wide and four inches thick. And then on the update and the power box on the town green, I don't believe it was a 4x10 box that got voted on, was it? Yes, it was. 4x10? 7x4. 7x4. 7x7, 7x4. So it says 4x10. And that needs to be correct. Okay. That's all I had. 
Mark? I'm good. Bob? I'm good. So am I. All in favor of approving the minutes with corrections? Aye. 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 Citizens comments, items not on the agenda. Charlie, can you come up to the podium, please? <coughs> so in the mail on uh, Saturday, we got this nice letter from the County Castle that the uh, owner of people that rent their properties out. Uh, and uh, I was wondering where it all started. And I hope somebody in this board can explain to me how this got this fair, if you guys didn't know about that, and ladies. Um, Mike, did you didn't have to make copies for him? Not of that. I, 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 but Neri Joe's here too. So, um, I had a, after we talked today, Charlie. I talked to her, um, and I and Bob was in the room, and um, it was not on the select board agenda. We know that for a fact, and it was nothing that I approved um, on my own. I, I didn't ever see the copies of them, so that it wasn't that. So, so does anybody know how it came about? Then can Neri Joe tell us how this came about? Mm -hmm. Because we want to remember one thing. Over 80% of our taxes goes to the state of Vermont. If the state of Vermont made this happen through our listers, then we got a big problem. You guys are fathers and mothers of this town, not the state of Vermont. We, we own this town, us taxpayers, everybody that lives here owns this town just like the state of Vermont. We the people. And it looks to me like we're being, having something shoved down our throat. This is a pretty slippery slope. When they start, they want to know how much rent you're charging, but they don't want to know all the other expenses that come along with it. So apparently they want to raise your assessment to make up for that rent that you're charging. So what's going to happen next? They're going to go to you, Mark, and say, okay, your, your cars that are on your lot, we're going to start charging you a higher tax rate on your property because you've got this many tax cars on your property. Are they going to go to you, Mary, and say, next time around, you're shipping this much milk off this farm, you're going to be taxed for that in your property taxes. I didn't get this letter that you're talking no, about. No, because you don't rent properties. Do you, right? oh, okay. So, Charlie, you have me at a disadvantage, so I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay, well, that's why I was hoping that he would have made up these letters. I didn't, I didn't, marriage wasn't, there was an air today, and so I didn't have access to him. So. Okay, well, I would wish I had known that uh, I'll pass this around. Well, we're, do you want to just explain just a little bit more about what yeah. that is, Joe. So what they're doing is what they want to do, what the listers want to do, or lister, or the town, somebody, they want to start, they want us to send everybody that rents a property in the town of Castle, then they want to know how much we're getting to rent. And they want us to fill out this form and do all this paperwork for them and then send it to them. So apparently somebody, either the town or the state, Somebody wants to charge more taxes on their <coughs> property because we're making it, get the revenue off it, but they don't ask how much it's costing you to have that property. And I'll give you an example. My wife and I used to own a house on Sand Hill Road that we rented out for years. And we did it for down the road to sell it before we get older, like now. Okay, so it's sold now. <laughs> so for years, the payment, the, the mortgage on it, was twelve hundred dollars and sixteen cents a month, but we were only getting a thousand dollar rent. I saw it earlier. We were paying the difference, and then we paid the property taxes difference, and we paid the taxes or the insurances difference. And that happens with a lot of people that are renting stuff. It's only because they're trying to get that little bit of extra. Now they're asking you to give them your full amount of rent, what you're charging for rent, but nothing else. They don't want your income taxes. They don't want nothing else to show that you've already showed all this and paid taxes on it through the federal and the state side. Now they want to tax this higher rate, apparently. Is that what they're doing? If, if I, I'm happy to yeah, well, chime I, in. I, I, I'd like okay. someone to explain that because okay. I'm going to tell you, I'm just one person, but I tell you, I've had more calls today on this from people that rent properties, and they are all really ticked off. Well, Charlie, I'm going to ask you to to let us digest this and understand it and then I'll be happy to discuss it with you. Mm -hmm. It's going to take me more than 30 seconds to read this and understand it so to the point where yeah, I can... Well, I would have hoped that, that you guys would have got copies. Obviously we did not. If I could give you an overview. Um, 
I'm going to let Mary Jo talk for just a yep. couple of minutes, and then we're going to read this and understand it, and then I'll be happy to call you and talk to you about it. No, you're going to, have, you're going to be talking to a lot of people. Well, I'm willing to have that conversation. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of people that's going to be really up in there. And if we, need, if we need to, we'll put it on the agenda for next meeting. Because... But, uh, we're going down an awful, awful slippery slope here. Next time, like I said, they're going to charge you for your cars you have on your property, Mary for the milk she's selling, Mary and I for the vegetables that we're selling. I, Charlie, we, I'm going to cut you off. I'm going to let Mary Jo talk for a couple of minutes, and then if we need to put this on the agenda for a subsequent meeting, we will. Otherwise, I'll I'll call you and we'll have a conversation. No, we're not going to have a conversation one on one. We're going to have a conversation with everybody. So in this meeting, knows. yeah, it's going to yeah. be a select board meeting. I'll I'll agree to that. I have a single conversation that's supposed to be illegal in the state of Vermont with a select person. I don't want to have that conversation well, right now. I, I'll agree with your request to have us have this at a select board meeting. Mary Jo? Mary, can you come here, Mary Jo? Just so we can, the recording picture. The recording, the Zoom recording picks up better. Peg TV picks up better. Okay. So, as everyone knows, the town is going through a town-wide reappraisal. The town has hired a company called Tyler Technologies to facilitate this process. Um, when, you, when you're doing an appraisal, there are three methods of coming to um, valuation. One is cost, one is sales, and the other is income. This letter that was sent out with my name on it, on behalf of Tyler Technologies, was sent to businesses in town, uh, partic particularly um, commercial rental properties, people who rent um, apartments, multi-apartments, things like that. There should be an in not only an income form, but there should be an expense form. And typically what happens is you're listing the income and you're listing your expenses. I believe there, there should be two forms, at least two forms in that. Package. There was. Okay. There was. There was. Okay. And then there's a formula that they use. Um, they, they, have, they figure out cap rates and all these things. And it's one of the three methods that they put together to come up with valuation. Um, it, it's, it's, it's just part of the process. Um, it's one, one of the methods that they use. Um, if the select board wants everything that they pass forward to come before them before it goes out, I'm happy to do that. I was not under the impression that everything had to be approved once this company was hired to do a job. We do expect them to do the job, do it thoroughly, do it properly, and do it to our expectations. So that our common level of, of appraisal in the end will be near 100%. Right now it's at 70%. So beyond the, your education tax, which is probably 80% of your bill, being a problem, the 70% common level of appraisal will be divided into that, and that's going to raise the state rate. Um, we won't be seeing that anytime soon because the school budget was just passed on the 18th. The, there's a 30-day appeal period. So if somebody wants to, or a group of people want to appeal that vote for whatever legal reason they may have, the state has to wait the 30 days before they can set the tax rate. And then they have, I believe, seven days to set the tax rate. So we're looking at the very end of July. These are, your tax bills have to go out by August 1 in order for your taxpayers to um, Joe, have the 30 not, days. That's not relevant payments. to the issue Charlie brought up. Okay, so what's relevant to the issue Charlie brought up is that this is a method I understand of, of coming to valuation. Which we've never done ever in the past. No town in the state of Vermont has ever done this in the past. We've hired no, an out-of-state firm that does not know Vermont law, for one thing. All right, well, I'm going to talk to Mary Jo and Mike about making sure the select board is included in the loop so we don't get blindsided like this again, Charlie. Mark, you wanted to say something? I had a question. So. <clears throat> Are they doing those three <coughs> different forms of appraisal on each property, or they decide it on the circumstance for each property? <coughs> because you could have, I could buy a million dollar house on the lake and rent it to my mother for $200 a month. 
and then if you assessed it by income it would come out very low if you assessed it by what I paid for it that would be more realistic well, I think they're taking the, <coughs> the properties that are known as rentals so if somebody's doing that I'm not sure that that's gonna be something that's known but some properties probably were sold quite cheaply and divided up into a lot of college apartments right. and are really high earners so each and one <coughs> and you know that those need to be captured that needs to be captured um, yep. and that is really the point of, of an income based appraisal um, so they'll do it one way or another if people don't return the forms you know they'll they'll pursue it however they they see fit did they send letters out to everybody that has Airbnbs? <coughs> they sent, I don't think they did, no. Because there's potential for the Airbnbs to make a higher rental profit than people that are renting out on a yearly basis. Well, there is. I'm not sure whether they capture the Airbnbs at this point. Well, it's not really fair for the other renters then to assess it in that fashion. Well, short-term rentals are also different than long-term it's still a profit generator though on the property at that point yeah. oh, yeah. no, profit absolutely. Generating. And, and Airbnbs do, do pay taxes as a matter of fact those taxes are going up to 12 percent okay at this point we're not going to have a discussion on how the appraisal is performed we're going to move on yeah. um, I, I'm going to let Charlie Brown speak one more time and then we're going to move on okay. go ahead Charlie I'd like to ask the question then so this company that we hired now the last one we hired never did any deed work whatsoever a lot of lots in this town many many of them have plenty of easements across them power line easements everything else i fought them the last time because they never once looked at any of our deeds that we own to see all the easements that we have on it so we were just charged full swing so i took it and, and i agreed it, and we won but why should i have to do that why shouldn't we hire somebody that's going to know our laws and do it properly instead of half-assing it? Excuse my language. But that's what's going on. That's what happened last time, and it's going to happen again. And exactly what he just said over there, what Robbie just said, some people are going to get nailed, and other people are not going to get nailed. And what happens when, if we're renting our house and we rent it for half a year, but you guys have already raised that assessment, and I... Do I got to come in and tell you? Do, do I get my rebate on my taxes if I only rent that property for half a half a year? Well, if you if you so if I rent that property for a half a year and I want to end that, it's already in, built in my taxes. The increase. We're going to have this uh, discussion that we're going to have to have in depth, but not not tonight. We're going to move on. Well, thank Any you, more citizens. And thank I'm you, not, Charlie. Yeah, like you. But this is I insane. Like this is working. insane. Absolutely insane. We're going down a slip, very slippery slope here. This this select board is going to do a deep dive on this for you. I understand your point, right? One quickly, one question. I own. Can I speak? I own rentals, Roy Newton, and one of them. I have two apartments. One of them, I have not been able to rent for a long time because of uh, water issues leaking and whatnot. And I think this proposal is very discriminating. Who wants to speak? Oh, yeah, I do. Dave Bridgers. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm calling about the sewer assess the sewer program for uh, Crystal Heights. That sewer uh, has been tabled for now. We're not going to move forward with that, at least for the immediate future. And this is a oh, I know what this is a select board meeting, not a sewer commissioner meeting. I will be happy to. You're the one that I we've been playing phone tag, so I will give you a call. Yes, yeah. I'll commit to that, and we'll talk. Okay, okay. Thank you. It's you're welcome. Thanks. Okay. Please relay to me what comes of that. I will. Yep. We've been playing phone tag. Yeah. I've, I've talked to him a couple times. Yep. 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 I'll make the point of getting all of them. Thank you. Mr. You called me today, but I was on the road and I couldn't call. Well, are, are, are you? I don't think you said this. I just want to make sure. Do you say you want this on a future agenda? We're going to do a deep dive, and then we're going to make a decision. But this board needs to be aware of what the assessment process is. 
I was totally blindsided by Charlie tonight, and I'm not very happy about it. Okay, we're going to move on. Any more citizens' comments? <coughs> Please tell us who you are, Mary. Mary yep, Mary McIntyre, um, Castleton, Vermont. Um, thank you, uh, Slugman Steele, for pointing out that the Lions Club's pedestal, power pedestal, was seven by four. Um, we got the zoning permit, and it came through with the seven by six, I think it was, whatever the old one was. So I have squared it away with Karen so we have the right dimension on the current permit. So we're good with that. So really, I come here tonight wearing my um, Castleton Friends of Parks and Recreation hat. Um, so just to keep you up to date, we had a coin drop that was very successful. Um, and we also, this past weekend, had the town-wide yard sale. Uh, that was uh, an event that the community center had hosted for years, and they chose to drop it this year. And uh, town manager uh, Mike Jones uh, brought it to our attention to see if we would be interested. We thought it was a little out of the realm of recreation, per se, but we did think that in the sense of community and community building, which is what recreation also is to us, that we would um, take it on. And it uh, was a bigger project than a lot of us thought and uh, had, a, had a lot of moving pieces. And, uh, uh, but we pulled it off. We had uh, 20, We had 27 spaces um, in the in the gym, and we sold out all of them. Um, and we rented out five tables. Um, <clears throat> so it ran from um, nine to two, I believe it was. And uh, Mother Nature, um, I think, came through for us in a in a sense in that it rained. So it served to be beneficial that everybody rented spaces inside. And, uh, you know, uh, the nice thing about it, too, was that um, people got to see um, the structure. We had a lot of uh, positive feedback. We had um, people wondering how they can rent the facility. Um, they want to know costs. Um, in talking, we thought, okay, we don't know that. We're there. Um, maybe we could get some communication going uh, publicly on that. So that um, you know, everybody, we if we didn't capture that in our our heads off the top of our head, we can refer people to the town website where they could see the prices, much like the rentals up at the beach, and then they can make phone calls um, to pursue that. Uh, one gentleman in particular is interested in running a basketball camp, um, so I think it served a, a lot of good purposes and. Um, if you get a chance, um, Lori Kamuda uh, did a fabulous um, bulletin board of everything that's been going on in recreation for the past year. And she, she did it in uh, a realm of a flower garden. And she's got our meetings, future meetings coming up posted there. And she's got the turkey trot. So it's, it's pretty exciting in and of itself just to look at that bulletin board. Um, so, any questions? Where is that bulletin board located? Right across from where the uh, home ec uh, in, the, was. in the village school. Right, right in the village school. Okay, yep. I missed that. Oh, yeah. that's okay. Well, um, so that when people were coming through to get to the gym, they could see what was happening. Because um, that, that seems to be a, a disconnect, and I know that John's been really busy working on the fields and everything, but that still seems to be a disconnect of people are wondering what the events are, when they're going to happen, and they're still looking for events. But hopefully, <coughs> uh, John slows a little on that. Uh, some programming can be done, and Friends of Rec can help with that. Um, you know, I think we have a lot of Castleton residents. I think there's some 
out of town residents that are a little interested in in you know being involved but I do think there's a lot of town residents and of course when we're talking taxes and everything I think we have to be very careful that we do let town of Castleton members get involved uh, if they want to be um, so but uh, getting a lot of compliments as well on the uh, how good the fields are looking they are we, we took a look today and we can see the progress that's being made yeah and now people are just anxious to see programming in the building so thank you you're welcome thank you Mary thank, thank you Mary. Mary appreciate all your work chief you're up oh I'm sorry my name is Carol Lester and I live on School Street and I have an animal problem if there's animals running loose goats ducks no I'm sorry they're geese now chickens dogs I've had to call um, I talked to Karen she said I needed to come talk to you so that you see there's a real person that has problems with this little zoo on my street um, I've had to talk to doctor or to yeah, <laughs> chief Mantello um, we've had to have the police come a couple of times um, I have I took pictures of the goats <coughs> in the neighbor's yard on my way here tonight um, it's become a it's become a battle um, <coughs> between two families that uh, compete with each other for animals but anyway I real I need to tell you we need to have zoning that would say that if if you want animals they have to be kept on your property when you've got a half an acre of land and you've got a bazillion animals it doesn't cut it for the neighbor I'm, you know it's this free range thing well if I wanted animals I would have them I could have them but I choose not to and I don't want my neighbors animals last year I had one neighbor she let go four rabbits well one of them lived under my deck for most of the summer and they got big enough and I mean it was like the clover in my lawn my flowers I mean it was you know you can't have anything this was a domestic rabbit yeah yeah but they think it's cute because oh well you know everybody loves them it's like the neighbors um, we have a new family that have the little double wide that was Martell's and um, they came up from New York well they've got this big goat in their carport they had to go buy a sweeper to sweep all the goat poop off and they can't park in the carport because the goat was there and now she's had two babies and they've got another goat so one neighbor has them and they, they just let them go and they collect dogs and it's I don't want the geese in my yard I don't want the goats in my yard I don't want the chickens in my yard and and they're eating up the goats are eating up all my neighbors now Kathy Egan lives in the brick house on the end of school street Park Street they've eaten up her bushes and her flowers Linda Stevenson's across the street from me they're chewing up her trees this high up her her trees are all bare because the goats are eating them um, me I have plants flowers poop in my yard down my driveway I mean it's fun but I think that we need zoning that would require the na the animal people to keep their animals in their yard if they want animals their yard should be fenced in and the animal should be kept in that property instead of allowed to roam the neighborhood I have to agree with everything you're saying it's I, I would expect that my neighbors would control their animals as well so what I will do is this I, I don't have the animal control ordinance in my head I will make sure that I read that tomorrow and I'll talk to the town manager the animal control officer and the police chief to find out what we can do to help you legally and then at, at minimum I'm sure we can make some phone calls but there has to be more we can do but once again I don't have the animal control ordinance in my head to no, but I think there's something in there that you can only have a certain number of chickens, and you you can't 
I can't believe, just let him run free. I believe, sure, you know, yeah, I believe. Certainly my hope if we did one that it should be written in there, keeps your animals in your own yard. I but mean. they have to be fenced in because these people yeah. are not responsible. However, oh, we, however, ma'am, right now, I, all I can tell you is what we think. I don't know what we know. So we're going to have to figure out what Chief we... Chief Mantello's been, and he's talked. He said you can't be letting your animals run loose. And he no sooner leaves the, the, the yard and their the animals are loose. So they don't even respect the fact that... Uh, well, I will not make a promise I can't keep. So what a first promise I will do is I will look, making sure I understand the ordinance and see what kind of teeth it has and what we can do to help you. Okay. And if we don't have the right teeth in that ordinance, then this board is probably at least three-fifths of this board right now are ready to do something about that. Thank you. Okay? I appreciate that. Mike? Ms. Lester, yes. have you been able to contact or get a hold of the animal control officer? Um, that's kind of a funny story. At one point he told me that he was afraid to come down my street because we have a couple of the, these animal owners are very hostile. So he doesn't like to, so when I call, I leave him a message and then I call Karen and then Karen calls Chief Mantello and he comes to visit, but no animal control. I say, please call me back so that I know that you have gotten this message and you're going to respond to it. Nothing. All right. So. Thank you. All right. We're going to fix that, too. Anything, anything from the board on this before we move on? Charlie. Charlie's got a question here. Charlie. Do you guys still, still appoint a fence viewer in the town? We do. <clears throat> so wherever your fence viewer is, anybody that has animals, any town, and this goes back 200 years, the fence viewer, you have to have a fence around your property. And, and uh, as you're looking at your property and your neighbor's looking at you, you're supposed to build a fence to the right and he builds the fence to the right. The fence viewer would show up and if that fence isn't built, then they're responsible to build it. That's the law. Bob's Thank a you. fence viewer. Fence that would be me, Charlie. <laughs> well, well, what's the law, Bob? Out of the three. <laughs> but I was told it was a, a mute position, but now yeah. you've enlightened me. Now, that fence viewer is one of the first people they put in place when they created the Constitution in the state of Vermont. Do you know what kind of teeth are in it, Charlie? I mean, it's, it's, I'm not afraid to go show up there like our animal control officer is, and I'm not I, making it. You know, if I own a farm and you own a farm and my animals kept getting on you, okay, that fence viewer would come around and said, hey, Charlie Brown, you better be fixing that fence to your right, and your neighbor better be fixing it to the right as he's facing you. That stops the problem. Okay. That's what a fence viewer is all about. It's been in our Constitution. It's been around for 200 years. It always has worked. But a lot of people have gotten away from that going, they always go to the police chief or somebody else. But we're going to find out just where the teeth are. We need to fix this, okay? Yeah, there's state statute too, Bob. We can look it up. Got one question. Go ahead, Mary Lee. Isn't there a leash law for dogs in town? Only in certain parts certain. of the town, <clears throat> not in that part of town. Only in, I think it's just in the village. I think you're right. Pretty sure we, I remember going through that. Well, we talked in, about that for in the a long cemetery. Time. Yeah. All right. So anything? Did they cross the road? Mark? Do they cross the road? No, do they cross School they Street? Cross the road in front of me? Or are you a neighboring property? The animals crossing the road to get your house? You mean like across my street? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's illegal. All right, we're gonna we're gonna do a deep dive on this. I'll start work that process tomorrow. <laughs> and if the board has to have a special meeting and go go visit School Street, we'll do that. She's got a. Work kind of She's got a <coughs> there's <laughs> there's one more thing we need to get done, so we'll get it done. All right. Anything other else for citizens' concerns? Okay, Chief Mantello, you're up. Okay. Well, I do want to make a couple comments on Miss Lester uh, when I did meet with her, and so we've documented two cases on them right now. So the third time you just go through the civil process and issue tickets. You know, we did that with a person uh, down on 4A with her dog, and they keep still letting it loose. I mean, there's, there's not much you can do about it. You just keep, and and that that particular person's at the hundred dollar fine 
max right now. So I have tried to contact our animal control officer and I'm actually pretty upset <coughs> with that, but I may have to go visit his house at night in the dark, <laughs> like a 10. <laughs> As I can't get a hold of him, he doesn't. He's responded once since last week. Um, all right, we can move on from that. I handed out the uh, the reports for the monthly reports. Uh, I'm kind of going to go through this uh, some of this pretty quick. There's a, there's definitely some increases from our call ratio from uh, April to May. May obviously warm weather comes in, so uh, we have increased that. The big things that stand out uh, really comes down to the criminal arrests. If you go into the criminal arrests, we had we were up three, got 13, but we had uh, four restraining order violations, and we had three domestic, or three domestic, and two domestic aggravated assaults. So that's over half of what. We're, we're dealing with so as we've seen recently even last night another another domestic that one of my officers went to um, we've seen an increase in the violent crimes um, we did have some uh, conditions of release uh, those are people that have that are on conditions for a particular crime you charge them for a violation like they weren't supposed to contact that person or they got too close to that person or contact them through a third party or something like that. So we're seeing more and more of those things occurring. So any questions on the calls of service and the criminal arrests? Yes. The agency assist, this is when you go to another town to assist their officers? No, that is not. Uh, that can be. So out of that 14, if you look at our agency assist, I think we did 10. 10 of those were part of that 14. Four of them could be um, serving a subpoena through the uh, from a state agency to somebody to be a witness or something like that. And those other communities reciprocate? What's that? The other communities that you assist with, they reciprocate? Uh, on the average, probably not. That's always been an issue here. We, we've discussed this since I've been here for 10 years over this. We've cut it down, um, but that's not the, uh, this is not this is not the place to bring it up because it'll get ugly. Okay. I'll just leave it at that, Mark. I'm not trying to be. It's just uh, it's been a frustrating thing. Um, you know that we had that one in Poultney. If you look on the net, the, one of the last pages, uh, Poultney. Uh, yeah, we do. We do, we do assist agencies. VSP has backed us up. I mean, Fairhaven has too. Yeah, but uh, we're always see the. This is the biggest. This is the biggest thing, and this has really been a blessing for us and a curse for this department because we are easily available. We answer our phones. I can't tell you. We've seen the increase in the last six months of people <coughs> calling from neighboring towns trying to ask for police. It's like, well, this is Castle. We don't patrol Poultney. We don't patrol Fairhaven. We don't patrol Benson. So, because we're accessible. So it's bet that, Ben, we have that phone out there. That call box goes to our cell phone. We have a on-duty cell phone. So anybody calls a 5012 line, it <coughs> goes to that cell phone. So the on-duty officer has that with them all the time. And then, of course, we got the office number. So we're seeing more and more people just not getting services elsewhere. They know we have the reputation that we do what we're supposed to do. I'll just be straight up. We answer people's phone calls. We go to the complaints. Yeah. Well, let's go just one thing there. The complaints you go to are the ones in Castleton. Correct. correct. Or if VSP or correct. Craven PD asks you for backup. Correct. That's what I mean. Yes, I'm not saying I but go to all these. If other somebody towns. calls you from Benson, it's it's because we're 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 available. They see us. They see this. You know that a lot of people think that we cover more than we cover. You don't go to a car prowl call in Benson. No, right? no. You wouldn't Castleton though. Correct. Yeah. Okay. That's what I mean by that. Okay. That's all. That's what I was looking for. Yeah. Any other questions on the 
backup, uh, any of the other stuff. Um, as you know, if you, if you look through those notes, I'll kind of go through this because I did give these out tonight. Uh, we talked about in the first paragraph under other about our uh, arrest going up from April to May. Um, we're still doing our property checks and residential checks, foot patrols. Uh, we did do a campaign from Memorial Day weekend uh, through Highway Safety. It's a, they have certain programs throughout the year for certain times to target um, operations on, on traffic on highway and it's covered by their program so anything that we do under that program gets reimbursed by the governor's highway safety which we've been doing since I've been here and uh, we made 66 traffic stops during that period, 23 speed tickets and two seatbelt violations um, and then we the grant paid, you know, 45 hours of highway safety patrols, 23 hours of DUI enforcement patrols. Uh, like, just for instance, tonight, uh, my uh, officer Piatek got a got a, a DUI just before it came over here. So we'll assign that to that because actually he was on highway safety when that occurred. So that'll cover that. Uh, he also, Justin also, we were thinking we were going to, we don't really need any new vests, but we applied for the body armor um, grant that's through every year that's funded. We, uh, they pay 50% and we pay 50%. So we try to replace, replace vests, <coughs> we're, talk, we're talking uh, uh, the bulletproof vests, depending on the wear, every three to five years. So we're in rotation now, where two officers need to get changed over. And you got a year to use that, that money from there. Did our sex offender registries, uh, and we also, which we only have six that are registered in Castleton. We have to do it every quarter. We're mandated by state law. <laughs> we also, talked about, remember I talked about way back that we thought we were going to get more transients coming in. Yeah, we did. Um, we're finding uh, a couple people came here. They're, they're coming at nighttime looking for assistance, for travel, for gas, for everything. We have what we have, so we have each have gas cards, gift cards that we purchase that there are times when we want somebody that somebody doesn't have gas, we'll give we'll give them a twenty dollar gas card. Because if we don't do that, they're not going to go anywhere, and we got no real shelters or anything like that. So we try to help them with that. Uh, Justin found somebody sleeping on the entrance of the town office last week. Or that maybe that wasn't May. I know I got that wasn't. Yeah, that no, that was actually in the beginning of June, end of May. Um, he was one of the people that we got to move along. So you're seeing that more and more increase the some warmer months. And um, any questions on the report? And I do have two other new items I've got to bring up to your attention. Any questions on the report? I have none. Yes, Bob. <laughs> On that sex offender registry compliance checks, what exactly do you do? We have to make sure that that address, they have to comply to state law that the address they're at, is that's where they're living. So, so you drive to that address? Yeah, we could drive to it. We know most of them. Like, we know where they all are. So, yeah, we have just to make sure that. Physically happens. see if they're there. Correct. Well, I mean, they could be working. But we have to know that that's their address that's their domicile that yeah, correct because if not it's a violation because they have to live where they say they're going to live correct um, remember I told you about the or any other questions on, on the report no I told you about the uh, the speed limit uh, that we, we did get uh, the speed limit reduction for castle and four corners actually no I told you that they were going to meet June 12th well they passed it it's going to happen so where is the so, boundaries going to be? All right. So I have a certificate here that's that's going to go to it's got to go to the town on indicating. So the speed limit. This is this is only south and north, not east and west. Okay. 
based on the accidents coming and usually that way. Uh, 35 zone is going to begin 0.23 miles south of Main Street, Vermont 4A, and at Preston Lane North, and then the 40 will begin at that point. Where does the 0.23 come down? 0.23 miles south of Main Street. Down by the Grange? Yeah, I don't know. Range yeah, that's a quarter mile, so whatever that would be. So it would be 35 to the <coughs> delight? Be 35 all the way to Preston Lane. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Because right now it's 50 to the light, isn't it? No, it's 40. 40. It's 40. 40. Yeah. I'm usually doing 50. I don't, I don't go up <laughs> through there very often. I do. I'm going to tell you. I come flying out of the castle. And, yeah. Yeah. I'm going 50. I'm going 50. So they are going to put a work order out. I got the letter here. It will be issued to the Vermont Trans Maintenance staff to install the required signs. A new speed will take effect once the signs have been installed. Um, no further action is required by the town. However, we recommend a copy of the certificate, a certificate number here. That, that I'll give that to Mike. Um, be filed in town records. So, and they don't really have a time frame when this is going to happen. But my guess, I can get a hold of. I know they're going to get a hold of Jeremy, so I'll, I can always check with him. I think that's a huge plus for us. Uh, there's other intersections I'd love to see him change too. I'd, let, I'd like to see him do the Browns four corners there. I think that that we've had plenty of accidents there. We've talked about that at nauseum to to uh, Vermont Trans on that. Maybe I'll see if I can get them do a uh, traffic study there. Absolutely, go ahead. <clears throat> when uh, 1969, I saw further back that road. That old barn on the corner that we owned used to come right into the road. My grandfather made a deal with the state that he would take that barn down and they were going to cut that knoll off and cut the other to the south off. They never did it. They could have done it back then for like 15,000 bucks in 1969. They waited. They put them stupid lights out that only tell you one direction. They do help a little bit, but not much. I still hate to cross that road, yeah. even in a cruiser. Yeah. Because I'm trying to think, okay, that light isn't. What if that light's not working down right. there? Yeah. You just, just don't know. And then by the you're in there, you got to go. Not only that, if they're coming from Pulteney and they're in the dip, yes, that light stops blinking. Yeah. You take off. You look to the right. You think that there's nothing there, but they're in the dip. You can't see them. You can't even see a pickup in the dip. By the time you pull out in the way, yeah. that truck or car is on top of you. So that, that one I think is essential that I start working on that one, getting that one squared up. So maybe we at least get a traffic study and maybe they'll, they'll look at the accidents as we've had last year. I, I'd have to look at the, uh, the, the statistics, but I know we've had three or four last year there. I mean, they weren't, I shouldn't say, not, uh, every accident's serious, but nobody died. But still, they were some major, major crashes. In my lifetime, we've had at least seven to eight people die there yeah. in my lifetime. I can remember since on the fire department at least two or three. Oh yeah, it's huge. Right. Heath will tell you. Yeah. It's harder to uh, to balance it. All right, All let's right. move I on, wanna, Chief. I, I want to cover one more thing. Sorry about that. It took longer than. Um, I do have the new contract from the for, for the SROs that the school is going to pay out for next year. I need you guys to look at that, and I just need the chairman to sign it. I got to have it by tomorrow morning. <laughs> we do this every year. It's the same contract. <laughs> this is the same. Everything's the same as last year. Yeah, absolutely. The price, the the fees didn't change. Yeah, well, no, they changed. They're paying it. They're not. We're not paying anything. They're paying yeah. us. It, it covers everything. Well, true. Taxpayers are paying. Yeah. It's not coming out of the town budget, at least. Correct. So that's. Um, that's a copy. <coughs> Leave it for you guys. We need They're paying you the same as last year. It's gone up because because our pay has gone yeah. up. Okay, so it has gone up to accommodate that. Correct. Covers <coughs> wages, benefits, mileage. Correct. 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 Still covers all your expenses. Correct. 
Just real quickly, Pete, what schools does it cover? It'll cover CES, Benson, and Orwell. CES, Benson, and Orwell. Just these In the future, nope. I would prefer more than a five minutes so notice that we have to review this and approve it. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, if you can't get it done tonight, <laughs> but I. Well, we're, we're going to do it, but in the future, if you can give us at least a, provide it to us before the meeting so we know what's coming. I was given this this afternoon, so I, that's, I'll, take the, I'll take the hit on that. Well, at, at least before the meeting so we know what's yeah. coming, so we all have a chance to <clears> review it yeah. for five minutes. Yeah. I'll make a motion, Bob. Please. Okay, let me see if I can talk with this. I make a motion to approve SRO contract between Slate Valley Union School District and the Town of Castleton's Police Department for a total of $67,260 for 20 hours payable in one lump installment. Is there a time frame on there, Bob? September 1st. September 1st, school year, beginning of the school year on September 1st, 2023. Should be 2024. Should be 2024, yeah. Which that she gave me this, so she probably didn't change it. Yeah, she didn't. It's uh, it's a period to cover August 30th, 2024 through June 30th of 2025. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Do you sign it? No, I'm not going to sign this until it has the right dates on it. Yes, Kate. I agree. I agree. <coughs> I so not, you come and see I me tomorrow. I'll be in the shop, or have Mike come and see yeah. me. Yeah. So that is uh, my report and all the information that I have. Mr. Chairman, I say something. So the, I signed that purchase and sales agreement for that vehicle today and did you know the, did you get a report of the break-in up at the cemetery yes right. yeah well it was, the, it was the equipment shed and all i took was right. five gallons of gas they broke the door and yeah. took gas but they leave town after you took the gas <laughs> oh i would hope so you maybe they ran gas. out of gas that's what i meant ran out and of gas. they only could get up there through the brown fire and robe and you could get a you gave them a gas card so then they left town they, they ran out of uh, gas no. at the town office and then fell asleep on the steps yeah probably the same guy. all right let's move on all right i'll just <clears throat> yes were you going to cover something about the police vehicles going home or that doesn't it's on need... the agenda oh so he's coming back <clears throat> he's right here okay okay it's the next thing on the agenda <clears throat> Okay, so he's staying oh, right there. The, 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 the vehicle use of policy. That's the next thing on the agenda, Correct. Chief. And you're in just the right place. Yeah. Um, he was going to sit down, so I just... Oh, I was, was actually. <laughs> no, you're not. It's on, okay, so the next item on the agenda is the police department vehicle use policy. And we've been through this numerous times over the last three months. The only thing I found is on the bottom of page two, we should insert the word not limited to. Is your intent? Yeah. The word "not" is missing. You see what I'm saying? I got it. It says here, he or she must meet the following criteria, but not what it should be, but not limited to, and then yes. the criteria right. instead yeah. of just but limited to. Okay. Um, yeah. So, with that revision, I would be prepared to discuss it more if the board pleases to do so. I think all pleasure. the corrections were made that we had asked for. Yeah, that's the only thing I found. <coughs> that one word is missing. Else. Mark? I'm good. As long as the same thing applies, that uh, these officers have the cars home so they can respond to emergencies in the town of Castleton and not in other communities. Right. And it's very clear in here to that. I thought it was clear. Rob? I'm good. Mary Lee? Fine. Bob? I'm good. So, we will... I just got to make that change. You got to make, make that, that change, change and then we'll ratify it. Absolutely. Okay? Okay. Do you need to vote on it or just accept it? We can vote on it when it's... <clears throat> when we get a final version, we'll vote on it. He's got to put one word in, should we just... We could we could Hold approve it now, with, so we don't yeah. have to keep going back. We to could it. approve it with changes. 
I would make a motion to approve the vehicle use policy with the change of adding not in the last line <coughs> of page two. We have a second? Second. second. So I moved and seconded. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> That's a good, sir. That's good. We're all set. Thank you, yeah. Chief. Yeah. <coughs> Transfer station fee schedule. Uh, I'm going to defer to, we're going to give Mike the floor first. All right, so the board, last meeting, the board, um, I, I presented uh, the, some proposed fee changes. Um, subsequent to that meeting um, and some input from Jacob uh, and through an email, um, and I think I sent to you guys the, the cross multiplication and division that if we're charging $2.50 for a 13 gallon bag, charging $5 um, for the large bag um, was undercharging it. So um, for the 33 gallon size, it'd be basically up to 36 gallons, it'd be, it's a little over $6, but it, it was miscellaneous change so I made the recommendation to um, for the board to consider the large bag being six dollars not five dollars as you approved at the last meeting um, and the mattress uh, charge f um, seen as we're paying forty one dollars to get rid of them um, there's I think we talked about it last meeting that charging forty one dollars for that mattress is probably not going to be to our advantage, but to change it from 19 to 25. And the Freon, um, uh, for those appliances um, that we, well, I'll, I'll digress in a second. Um, from $19 to 20, because there's going to be uh, there's going to be an upcharge from the for the people that do this. Um, and Rob Rob Steele had sent me a copy of a group that takes these uh, air conditioners and stuff and they'll take them off our uh, off somebody's hands for for nothing um, I don't know if they take refrigerators and freezers and stuff like that but um, it's something I can look into with and get Jacob involved with it that we reach out to them and if they'll take those that w so we don't have to pay to get the Freon out of them they just take them they'll probably recapture and reclaim that that Freon and then use the scrap metal um, they'll get the scrap metal price as well but um, I doubt we're gonna get 20 19 or 20 dollars uh, in scrap metal price for for a uh, uh, air conditioning unit, so it would be it would it'd be to our advantage if they took them, and we just got rid of them. Um, but we still have to contend with the things that they won't take, like if it's freezers or refrigerators or dehumidifiers, that kind of stuff. Um, but we should at least be charging what we're what they're charging us. I mean, I, I you could I could shop, you could probably say, well, why don't we apply that to the mattresses, but. That's just that was a huge, huge blow. So we're trying to find different ways to solve that one. Um, My wife had a thought on that too. She said anybody that's going to pay twenty dollars to get rid of a mattress is probably going to pay the forty-one to get rid of a mattress, and the person that's going to throw it over the bank probably would throw it over the bank for twenty dollars anyway. So, the, you, so your, your pleasure. Um, Thank I, your wife for that comment. We. I mean, that's for me. For me. I, I don't know if I die on that hill, but um, I'm not I'm not on the select board. So, yeah. um, and then um, the minimum uh, charge the the board had said twenty dollars for a minimum scale fee to fit that in because I have to backward I have to do the math backwards from eight hundred eighty a ton. So when you back it off every twenty pounds, um, it doesn't fit. So that on the current schedule, um, eighteen dollars fit in at the two hundred pound. Mark, so if you charge a minimum of eighteen dollars for up to two hundred pounds, and then it would pick up as it as it has been, the rate won't change because you if you did, you'd be changing the hundred eighty per ton rate, and uh, that's that were the were the most around. So I don't know if that would be in our favor either. So um, if that's that's the ment the methodology or mentality behind that, um, I believe those were the only changes. What were the two boxes oh, that you, you yellowed? What is that all about? Uh, hold on. I'm sorry, Bob. I was, I was looking just, at mistake. Just wondering what this yeah. Is. yeah, because if you look at that, it goes from 760, 780. Oh, I, I corrected it. Okay. I had I had highlighted it because it wasn't, I had missed a number in there. Oh, okay. Um, 
but that's why if you look over at the far right column, there's two uh, two thousand pounds drops one below everything. I had missed it over earlier, so I, I fixed it, and I just gave you highlighted that the minimum scale fee up to two hundred pounds would be eighteen dollars. So that would be my recommendation um, uh, above and beyond what you you already approved last my, last meeting. <coughs> you need a motion on that? Yes. Yeah. Make a motion we accept the new schedule of fees effective July 1st, 2024 for the Castleton Transfer Station. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Any more discussion? I have a question for the town manager. If there's, if there's Ooh. Watch up your eyes. No, big deal. Um, what's, uh, any more discussion? No? Mike, will this actually cover the or less cover the charges for the annual operating fund fee. Yeah, that's that's why. But by bringing it to six dollars, it really c c it closes that gap to where we're going to not be in the hole. Okay. I j I just had one quick question, the same one I had last time. Why are we still charging five dollars for the microwaves? Did you ever get an answer on that? No, I mean, if they throw in the if if it's not if, if they something comes in that's not metal. I mean, there might be some out there that aren't metal. I don't know. I've never come across them, but. Okay. Um, I can uh, put, give an answer to that if you guys have a second for that. that that's oh, Jake. Jake. <laughs> uh, the, the short answer is we aren't um, because of the amount of precious metal that is in them. They are something that we want to take in, not something that we want to try to discourage from taking in. So in the six months that I have been there, we have not been charging any fee for microwaves. <coughs> it's not really required. If, maybe you can amend the motion to take it uh, off there. I, I would I would like to amend my motion to remove that from the schedule of fees, so people won't throw them over the bank. Say it specifically, please, Bob. Um, I would make a motion to remove the microwaves that are on the schedule of fees that we're charging five bucks an hour. I would make a motion to remove that altogether. Uh, that's an amendment to the motion that's been moved and seconded. So do I have to please? Second, uh, so now we can call the question with the inclusion of the removing the microwaves. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 So you're clear, Mike? Yep, thank you. A lot of work, Mike. I thank you. Did you did your eye all right? My pen exploded and that one piece went flying yep, at you. Steal another pen of mine. Go ahead. This is the one I had last time. <clears throat> I probably stole it back. All right. I got it this week. <laughs> Right, let's move on. Um, Planning Commission conservation grant for the Castleton Village School drainage. Okay. The mis the the, uh, the uh, agenda could be misinterpreted to think it's some sort of a modification to the village school. No, this is one person contact me wanting to know what we were doing to the village school, and I told them it was about the stormwater drainage. It, it and they said, "Oh, that's not what they understood when they read the." agenda castle it does say cast well you got to read the first line to yeah no, that's it, it was it lacked clarity yeah. so that's all um so yes yeah, so that the that one for the village school is they're, they're just doing calling it that because it's a part of the property that this uh storm water mitigation um would be part of um and then there's a second one on there for west crystal haven stormwater treatment um these are both for grant or these are both contracts for planning correct correct one, one's twenty six thousand dollars for this village school and twenty seven thousand dollars for um the plant this is for planning only uh for those two locations these are not grants these are these are these are contracts no there's five hundred dollars that um it's you know and it's that's negotiable um but so our, our the fees for the town or our share would be five hundred dollars per Per, um, so we pay 500 they pay the rest correct do I have any motions for any of these <laughs> both at once we can do one I think we should do one at a time I would make a motion to approve the con subcontract or the contract for the Castleton Village School final design through the Rutland Region Planning Commission and the Pulteney Meadowy Natural Resource Conservation District. Does that work? Yeah. 
Second. For some not to exceed $26,000. For a sum not to exceed $26,000. So your second still good, Mike, or Mark? Yes. And just for clarity, everyone, our share of that $26,000 is $500. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 So it's the same thing with the West Crystal Haven stormwater plan, where our share is $500. Is that correct? Mm hmm out of 27,000. So do I have a motion for that one? I would make a motion to approve the grant for the West Crystal Haven stormwater treat treatment from the Rutland Region Planning Commission and the Portland Meadowy Natural Resource Conservation, Conservation District for amount not to exceed 27,000. Do I have a second? Second. I'll second. I have two seconds. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Part one, Tom. <clears throat> I have a question. Is there money available to do the work? There is. Um, uh, yeah. uh, yes, the, so this was the first step in the process, but it was up to, I think, $185,000 for, um, for the construction. So that money is available? Correct. What of the plan was on private property? If yes, to answer your question, so that's there. That's kind of a linchpin for it all. Has that person been contacted? I'm not sure at this point. The the engineer was supposed to reach out to him, but I'm not sure if they have or not. I've had a discussion with in that area, so I think they're receptive. Okay. Well, I'll just make a note to, to follow not up with more. Not on a formal level, just in, in conversation. All right. Question? Uh, yes. Where is the uh, 185000 coming from? That's state funding, I believe. It, it is it's state funding through the Champlain Southern Basin monies that were provided to the state of Vermont through the federal government. So there's no uh, local match for that? It, that's one of those $500 ones as well. Our local match is $500. This is money that's come from the federal government to help clean up the sediment and silt that's getting into Lake Champlain from all the various tributaries, including the Poultney and Castleton rivers. Phosphorus reduction. Phosphorus yeah. reduction and, and Medawee. Any okay, so now we're going to move on to appointments. Do we have to do these one line at a time, or can we just do this as one big document as presented, and then include the document in the minutes? Anyone have any idea? I think sometimes it's hard to find these if they're not if you don't do them individually. All right. Who wants to do the honors? <laughs> I don't know, but. Some of these haven't been done. Like, well, I, I, well listen, wait a minute. The, I, I'm not, the I'm ones that are expiring in 2024 are all we got to do. Yes. Yeah, that's kind of what I was getting at. I just asked her to give you an updated copy of the whole, because Mary Lee has asked sure. for this a couple different times. So we got to distinguish what ones we got to do. They'll just go right off the agenda, right? It gives when their term will, when the new term will be over. Duh. I do have a question. For all these boards, do these people have to be Castleton residents? Not necessarily. Depends on which board it is. No, ser seriously, not necessarily. Like I would, some of these boards, they do not have to be Castleton residents, and some they do. I'm not sure about the DRB. I know the select board has to be a resident of Castleton or a registered voter in Castleton. Um, Planning Commission, I don't believe they have to be a Castleton resident. Am I correct in that? One, I, I can't remember if it's the DRB or the PCs. One of them that they don't have to be. The select board can make that decision to make all of them from the town of Castle. So it's, it's what Liz McKay, Frank Johnson, and Jim Thomas for the Planning Commission. They all live in town, right? Well, 
One of them doesn't DRB, live, isn't year round. Uh, DRB, nobody's. Well, these all expire. Oh, wait a minute. Pat Keller should be up for the DRB. Yes. Yeah, it looks, based on a quick double check here, it looks like you can do it straight off the agenda, Rob, if you would like to do so. I will do the planning commission first, I guess, then. Sure. Um, I would make a motion to appoint the following people to the planning commission. Um, the first would be Liz McKay for a two-year seat to expire June 30th, 2026. Second one would be Frank Johnson for a one-year term set to expire June 30th, 2025. And the third one would be Jim Thomas for a one-year term set to expire June 30th, 2025. I'll second that. Then moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, I would make a motion to appoint Pat Keller to the reappoint Pat Keller to the Developmental Review Board for a one-year term that expires June 20th, 2025. June 30th, 2025. Is that right? June 20th, 2025. <coughs> Should, Should be 30th. 30. Oh. That's a typo. June 30th, 2025. Did someone second that? Uh, not yet, but I will now. I'll second that. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Sir. All in favor? Aye. 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 I do have a question on the Development Review Board. <clears throat> we seem to have, it looks like, four empty spots because Mike Holden is not renewing, and there's three more. Are we changing our nine board back to five or six or whatever? I've been through this several times, and the state statute is very clear that it is our discretion whether it be five, six, seven, eight, or nine members. We can set that at any time and change it at any time. So at this point, we have five members on the board. My suggestion would be to leave it at five, and if a sixth person wants to serve, they'd be appointed as an alternate. But that's not my decision alone. That's only my suggestion. But we went through this several times with I the current chairman. That, and that's why I'm. It is at our our this legislative body's discretion <clears throat> as to how many members are on the DRB anywhere between five and nine. I understand and I agree on that, but what I'm saying is if we've got five now, six months from now we can decide we want nine and add four more? Yes. Or does the five go for the year? It's and then we change? Vermont statute does not specify when in any year that we do that. Okay. No problem. Just so I'm clear on that. So if we have two people come next month and want to be on there, we can put them both on. If we agree to put them both on, we could have seven. We could, if we so choose. Yep. We could also choose to appoint them as alternates. Okay. Or not appoint them at all. Okay. That is solely at the discretion. I mean, we went through this with a a few months ago to make sure that everything was clear and we even got council involved and got VLCT involved and that's what the direction we got was correct me if I'm wrong Mike no, you're right. this was a lot of what's the right word questions well or misunderstandings people thought they understood the law and we thought we understood the law and then we got lawyers involved and and nobody understood it. We hope they understand <laughs> the law. All right, let's move on. Is three it? to nine. Um, three to nine, you're right. It is three to nine. Yeah, I'm reading it right now. It's three to nine. We can change it anytime we want. Yep. I knew if you called the vote. I went through that, Mark. Mm hmm. We didn't call the vote. We didn't call the vote. Not yet. Oh, we didn't call the vote? For, the, for the DRB. All in favor of the appointments for, the D for Pat Keller for the DRB? Aye. 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 Okay, Rob, you're on the roll. I would make a motion um, to reappoint Martha Clifford and Matt Ryan for three-year terms on the Recreation Commission set to expire June 30th, 2027. I'll, I'll second, second that. I, I, just, I just asked, with all 
all the changes to Hubbardton and Castleton, are you going to have out of state, out of town people on that right board? Just one <coughs> Because just below, you've got a review of recreation commission bylaws. What so does the review of the rec commission, what does that have to do with appointing two Castleton residents to the rec commission? Are both those people Castleton residents? I don't know. I don't Matt know. I don't, think Matt, Matt, I don't think Matt is. I think Matt's Hubbardton. I personally have no problem with Matt on the board, on the rec commission. Are we going to continue to be good neighbors? I'm just asking the general public, not specifically at you, Mayor. I, I haven't had a chance. You brought it up, so I, you know. But I want you to be informed. That's all. Okay. Does are you? Do you know something that's in the bylaws that we don't know? No, I have not read them. But I do know that there's changes because of the recent votes of, and I, I, I know that there are changes. That's not Maybe pertinent to this. That's not pertinent to this question. So I'm going to call the question. So All I in favor? I thought the select board would want to know if they're residents or not residents, and whether you're going to have residents on all these boards. Is that is that, would that be in the bylaws of not having town residents on? I honestly, when I went through this the other day, I honestly don't remember what's. I don't believe I, I saw I don't anything don't believe in there that any, said they had to be town residents. I just don't want to do something right now and then. Two minutes from now, I have to resend it. You know, that's all I'm asking. I read it just again what you're this asking. Morning, but that's all I'm asking. Yep. I, I want, I'm, I'm pretty want confident we're not violating anything. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Now we can move on to the to the uh, whoops to the rec commission bylaws, and I'm not prepared to support this at this point. I will discuss it, but I saw a lot of changes that I thought needed to be made. Did you want to touch on some of those, Mr. Chairman? Well, first off, I don't think it should be called an ordinance. It should be perhaps a charter of rights and responsibilities um, for starters. <coughs> and I'm not inclined to agree with the statement on the cover that says, it be it ordained and enacted by the select board of the town of Castle in the state of Vermont as follows. I don't think those words need to be there at all. I can go on. Uh, we're talking about a proposed uh, rec commission bylaw document. I have an extra copy if you want it. <coughs> rec commission bylaws, Charlie. And I think there's a little bit of work that needs to be done on this. Are we on a table to the next mini? Well, I. Perhaps the thing to do would be, Mike, do you have this as a Word document in your office? Um, or I don't you? believe so, but Martha, Martha's not, Martha can send it to me if I don't have it. Martha's hand is up, so perhaps we should let her speak. Mm -hmm. Martha, if you want to unmute yourself and speak, you feel free to do so. Yeah, just uh, on the unmuting. Um, <laughs> in regards to the first page that was on the old, um, rec commission bylaws so that's why it got put there um, and I do have a word document of this so what, what I would suggest Martha if you could um, either I can send you these changes and you could make them or you could send that to Karen and <coughs> Karen could make them so we have a change document that the select board could review there's a lot of the stuff I've got here is basic housekeeping and there's a couple of things that I really have an issue with some of the content or intent and I think it would be best if the select board and you and the town manager saw my thoughts before we took any more action on this um, I would highly suggest that somebody on that select board take the responsibility on to meet with the Commission so that we don't have to go through this. This is the second time I have submitted something like that. And if you're going to make changes, I, I need to know what we need to make changes for. I think short term, why don't you send that Word document to me and I'll, or send it to Karen, and I'll get with Karen and we'll do a change document and send it to you and then you and I can talk once you see what I have in mind. Okay? 
Okay, I will present that um, at a <coughs> commission meeting so that all the commissioners are aware of it. Okay, thank you. My question on here, it says review commission bylaws. And I looked and looked for my bylaws in there. Bylaws, they're ordinances. Well, let's see. I want to change it to a charter of rights and responsibilities for starters. Because and I, change I some looked of forever the for this piece of paper because I was looking for bylaws. So, Martha, we have a plan and we'll make progress on this. Okay? Okay. Yep. All right. So, at this point, I'd like to motion to table this. I'll make a motion to table the Recreation Commission bylaws. I'll second that. All in, it's been moved and seconded to table the Rec Commission bylaws discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, Mark, Mr. Brown, I wouldn't mind running this by you sometime tomorrow if we get a chance to see so if you can see what I have in mind. Because yep. sometimes you're. Can you call me in the morning? I'm going to be out of town in the afternoon and Wednesday. Yeah, I can do that like after 10. Okay. All right. Or all day Thursday, Friday. I'm good. Okay. And you'll get that to the rest of the board, Dick? Yeah, and then as soon as I get something that's conglomerated together, then I'll make sure you guys get electronic copies or paper copies. Okay. Paper, and please. And we can go and make progress before the next meeting. Road closure, East West Crystal Haven. That's up to you, Mike. Well, I, I wanted to bring it to your attention on uh, before the board because I can my memory's vague on on a conversation that happened at a select board in 2018 or 2019, um, where where somebody from that area came before the select board and asked about why that road isn't open, and if I my memory doesn't fail me, there was something said uh, along the lines that it was closed via a petition a group came before the select board and with a petition to close the road and that this at this meeting in question uh in 2018 or 19 um the chairman of the board said um if you wish to change that then come back with a petition to change it for the group for that those people that live in that area um since then um uh, since 2018-19 it's every year it seems to be an issue whether the roads open or closed and why it, why it has to be closed why it, why is it not open and um, I don't have the answer for them uh, because it's it was a decision that was made by the select board um, and besides some p parking space um, for people out there I, I don't I, I really don't understand why it's not open that people have to drive all the way down there whether it's a delivery truck or whatever and and then find a space to turn around and why we can't just drive through that place <clears throat> there's very few roads that in this town that are public roads that we say we're going to close them off and so the question is to the it, i get the questions and i really can't do anything about it so i wanted to bring it to your attention I think when that road was put in, that was the agreement with all the people up there that it would be closed off in the summertime so they don't get all the summer traffic going through there and create another dust. The reason we, we put it in there was for our plow trucks. That's why it was put in there. Mm -hmm. And at that time when it was put in there, I believe, and you can correct me, Tommy. I, I have all the paperwork. So if, what is this? If you're going to make it a road, then you need to do it legally. When Come on up here, yeah. And I brought this up in the select board before. When this thing was created, there was no public comment beforehand. That's not the way you're supposed to do things. I think it's um, when East Crystal Haven was improved. There was a road there, but it was brought up a class. When that happened, the select board, and here's the letter that you sent to all the budding property owners, so there could be public comment. Where's the stormwater going to go? All these kind of things that happen when you build something. All that was never was short circuited when this thing was built. So you don't even know. So I called the select board on it at the time, and I have all this emails back and forth between me and the then uh, 
town manager, swearing up and down, we are not building a road. We're not even going to connect the road. At that select board meeting, which you can all, I have the video here, you can all watch it. The conversation starts at the 58 minute point 20 second mark. That's what my public comment was. At the one minute point 13 second mark, the chairman of the select board at the time says the town has no intention of connecting those two roads. When it came up the first time, it was squashed because one, the road you built isn't in your right of way. And we can look at the, you know, I got the, the um, because this came when, when we got this letter, we got the, uh, the survey, which said what, are we, what the town intended to do. They didn't follow through because the <coughs> pitch of the road where it's supposed to be is pretty steep because there's a big ledge there. There's also a sewer uh, main back in there. And you had no legal right to discharge the water. So they never connected the roads, even though some people did want the road. They also wanted them bought, the road brought to the Kelly property, which, you know, was talked about, but there was no legal right to do it. So these things weren't done. Then you did this. And I, I say you because you're, now you're in charge. Whatever the past select board did, good or bad, you have to deal with it now. So, does the road meet the current standard even? You don't know that. Does, are you going to put stop signs there if it's open? All the other intersections there have stop signs. Is that safe the way it turns around there? When my elderly mother pulls out of our camp, she's blindsided by the UPS truck. And it's not our business to make UPS more profitable or Amazon more profitable. People should go to Gilmore's. That's in our interest. I know people like to order on the internet and everything's convenient, but those, we're not here to make other people's lives convenient. That's not what this is about. You don't have a legal right to discharge the water where you're doing it now. If you open that road, there's going to be more of that discharge into my prop, onto my property. Maybe this plan they have is going to work, I don't know. For many days, my property is not usable because the water is the co color of coffee. None of that was there before you built this road. If you had gone through the legal process in the beginning, all this might have been sorted out before you, we all started spending all this money. Mike says, well, we don't have any town roads that aren't open. Well, you never made a town road there. So, and I think the thing you're supposed to go is VSA Title 19, Section 701, and states, the selectmen shall promptly appoint a time and a date, both for examining the premises, hearing, per and blah, blah, blah. So we can all be on the same page, so we don't start wasting money. Now we're down this whole road. So if it's your prerogative to open the road, then open the road, but do it legally. And the more you, you know, and the more you keep doing stuff that you say you're not gonna do, then the less likely I am to go through with this easement. And I'm certainly going to take up Charlie's thing and we'll find out when, they, when we're going to, the assessments are going to go up, that if half of my property is under a town easement, then I hope that's going to be reflected in my taxes. But, you know, it's your prerogative if you want to open it, but do it legally. And I know it's, it's inconvenient for some people. That's that's life's inconvenient, you know. It's inconvenient for me to have a road there. So, you know, the most the people most affected by this, my camp, the Kelly camp, the Turner camp, none of them want it. You know, people, it's beneficial to us to be on a dead end. We like that. And now if you open it up, and it's not just the, it's the UPS truck, it's a Casella truck, and they don't stop there. They come whipping around that corner and I've almost been T-boned twice by the UPS truck there. You know, so, we all talk about safety and everything else. Are you polluting the lake with what you're doing? <coughs> you're causing danger to my family and my, my you know, children. There's, there's a lot of children down there. It's chaos down there in the summertime. None of those roads were built. Okay, Tom, we're going to move on. You know, so do what you're going to do, but until you do it, it should be closed off. That's your opinion. That's what's the pleasure of this board.
Do it legally. You never did it legally. But do it legally if you're going to do it. I'll, I'll get that research that we did that shows where the road is, and I'll, I'll bring it back to the select board. Okay. In addition, find out what a stop sign costs. So maybe that would be a welcome addition there is two stop signs, one on each end of it. Yep, stop sign would be a good idea. Whether they choose to stop or not, is then oh, it's an issue for Pete. I was about to finish my sentence, Tom. If they choose to stop or not is an issue we can have PD take up. They can write tickets for people failing to stop for a stop sign. Right now there's no stop sign, so there's not much we can do about it. What's the name of the road? Don't have an answer for that. Is it a road? You're, so you're opening the road tonight? Yes or no? We haven't made that decision yet, Tom. You say you say you're putting stop signs up, so that. I asked what a stop sign cost. I didn't say we were going to open the road. Well, <laughs> we have opened the road because we removed yeah. the barriers. People are using it. So you you have, Mr. Coombs. Okay. You you removed the barriers, so you've opened the road. Well, technically, we, the concrete barriers should have never been put there. Those were removed, and they're going to put back the temporary barriers, just like it has been for a long time. All, all I was I didn't mean to bring all this up. All I was saying is when the road was put in there, I believe that was the agreement between the town and the local people there that it would be shut off in the summertime, so you don't have the racing around there or whatever. It was put in there so the plow trucks would have a place to turn around or go around and not have to do a 10-point turn. Mm -hmm. no, that's I, why it was put in there. I understand that. Yeah. If that's the agreement, that's the agreement. But it would seem to me that, you know, what about an ambulance or a fire truck? I understand that, Mark, but I'm just telling you what the agreement was at the time. If that's the agreement, then... And if, if and that could be changed. If we ultimately <laughs> decide to keep the road open. Right now you've decided you're going to put the barriers up and temporarily close it again, correct? Yeah. Okay, so we'll do that. The road will be closed at least for the time being. And then if we open it up, I think we should look into putting stop signs on each end of it if we make that decision. But before we make that decision, we need to find out in writing what the agreements were at the time. Mm -hmm. Mr. Brown. You want to make sure to also that you have an easement across that property. We need to know for sure if that that's on you town property. Or you need to know if you have an easement across that property. Yeah. And that's what that's what the documents I was telling you I'll, I'll get. That's what we're trying to find out, Charlie. That's we're, that's, yeah, that's the first thing you should be doing. But I don't think it's an easement, is it? Isn't it town-owned property? That's. It, it's been alleged that's not. So we need to find that out for sure. That's the first thing we got to find out. Them lots, all them last lots got sold. Pardon me. Them, all the last lots got sold. I believe Bill Gilbert bought them, and then put the houses there. That was back the in the early nineties. So, Mark, it has been alleged that that road is not on town property. We need to find out whether that allegation is true or not before we move on. So I said, putting this survey, you know, the turning part of it is not on where it should be. And right away here, it's 50 feet plus a little bit more here. And so it looks like less than 75 feet. The end of your road is about 200 feet. I know the corner, the corner of it is on the turn of property. Whether he wants to fight that now, I don't know. Well, that's but not. At some point, when he wants to sell his land, it's going to come up. You know, there are the, all those there, there were survey marks that the town removed, and that's probably illegal. But they did. He did it anyway. And so the survey mark. Is What's an allegation that can be found in probably? It's laying right there in the bushes. I've seen it already. It's a steel rod laying in the bushes. It's still there. Yeah, not Somebody where, pulled it out. It's not where it was. <laughs> no, no. It should have been pulled out. You're not supposed to pull it out. All right, we're going to move on. That allegation, we got to find out where yeah. what, where the boundaries are, where the road is in relationship to all the landowners, et cetera. That's the first thing we need to know. Mm -hmm. So before we, until we know that, we're not going to open it up. Agreed? Okay, acceptance of Class 2 Highway Road Paving Grant. So in your packet is a copy of the VTrans Class 2 Paving Grant and for Blissville Road um, from the Pulteney Castleton Town Line to Route 4A. Um, the grant amount is $184,000. Um, and I asked if we don't, because 
I asked if we don't use all 184 in Blissville, can we use it on another section of Class 2 road? And the answer was no. Uh, it had to be only for this road. So the bid came in under that. So when we pay our 20% share, um, we're not going to maximize the grant, but we're still using the majority of the money um, to pave is coming out of the grant. So I would recommend that the board accept the Class 2 paving grant. We get one like every fifth year when they, they rotate it around the towns in the Rutland County. Want to make a motion? I um, excuse me. I'd ask that if you, when you make the motion, if you'd reference the grant number in the upper left-hand corner of the form. The, uh, yeah, I got it. Yeah. Right All right. And also, would you, um, in your motion, authorize the town manager to sign this agreement? Okay. I would make a motion to approve grant number P zero two one nine five for the sum of $184,000 and to have the town manager sign the grant contract. And can you state what it's for? Uh, for the paving of Blissville Road. Thank you. I'll, I'll second that. Myself. Well, I'll second it. Okay. It's been moved and seconded to accept this grant. All in favor or any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 You recused yourself, right? I recused because it's yep. the street I live no, on. I just didn't know if she heard it. Okay. That could be interpreted as a personal gain, so it's not a financial gain for sure. It's actually the other way because it raises the speed limit by 10. <laughs> <laughs> that pothole in front of Mike Bethel's house must slow some people down. I love that pothole. <laughs> I slow, I do either dodge it or slow down. Um... Resolution of the 2401 fiscal year 24 encumbrances. Uh, has everyone, everyone had a chance to go through this and understand what it's saying? Yes. And what an encumbrance is, is, is it's a, it <coughs> extends the use of money that's already been voted on and approved by the voters to be used for a very specific purpose um, for one year. So in other words, the $900 that we are potentially going to extend the use of, use of comes has to come out of a budget surplus. If there's no surplus, it goes away. And that particular line item for managing municipalities would be used for um, CPR, AED, basic first aid training and has to be spent in the next fiscal year. And that's typical of all these items. They're all contingent on there being a surplus. Um, so if anyone wants to make a motion for this resolution, then we can further discuss it, and that's when we'll talk to you. And if we don't have a motion, that goes away. Uh, make a motion to approve resolution number 24-01 um, for the assignment of unassigned general funds, operating budget, slash general fund, anticipated surplus. I'll second it for discussion. Been moved and seconded for discussion. Um, comments from the board? Questions from the board? Does this have to be approved before July 1? Yes. Yeah. It does. That's why we're doing it tonight. So we, it's always been at the last meeting before the fiscal year because we got to get a sense of, I had to go through the budget to get a sense of where we're at. Yeah. And you won't know where we're at until a week from now. It, 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 probably not. What, what happens is once we get the audit back, we, so we go on the audited findings, and that way it's we know it's true um so it could be september august or september before we really okay uh, find anything out okay and what happened last year was there was some in rec rec was one of them that um uh the anticipated surplus um wasn't as much as um it fell into the personnel side but so they didn't they didn't get to use that money okay and there, there's two just to explain it as well there's two under the extended reassignments um for the uh, town office and the public safety building and basically what those were were uh, trying to get a contractor to repair the entry doors at the town office um, and repair the the stucco on the pillar in the front 
at the town office and then at the public safety building <coughs> was um, you know that we had the water damage to the ceiling and the work was started and it hasn't been finished yet and it's just contractor availability because we've been staying with the same contractor um, and then the environmental sensors on the apparatus bay um, and the water damage and a, and a contractor to paint um, the wall so it was that was that was an extension because we, we couldn't get the contractors to commit to a time frame so we kept kicking the can down the road with them and um, so if, if you were to approve this this would carry that over so that that work could be done and not pass it into a future budget it's already been paid for any more questions from the board you still want to speak Charlie yeah, I don't. It's on there. It's um the seventy thousand nine seventy five. Seventy thousand nine seventy five is the twenty three twenty four, and the extended is eleven thousand two hundred. And that money's already you've already encumbered it once, and it just we couldn't get the work done. Um, there's some on here that have dropped off. Um, like there was the twenty four thousand five hundred for the the garage out back. Uh, I I contacted the um, Lavallies, and the price of that still hasn't come down enough. So I just. I gave up that fight. Mm -hmm. um, so there's mo there's stuff that came out of here that. So that money will go back into the general fund as income. Yeah. So, isn't there a tax rate for the town going up fourteen percent this year? Artificially, <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it there was thirteen point seven five percent, I believe. So let me ask you a dumb question: If, if we have seventy thousand dollars that's there. Unless it's an absolute emergency that you need to spend that money, wouldn't it be wise? Because between the town and the school budget, we're going up between 28 and 32 cents. Okay? That's, if it goes up, we'll say 25 cents. That's $250 more for every $1,000 you pay in taxes for everybody. If you pay 1000 bucks, you're going to pay 1250 bucks if it's 25 cents. Wouldn't it be wise to look at that number and to see if you could reduce that rate by just a little bit? Well, I don't. I, this, this won't be the full surplus, probably either, by my projections, either. So. I certainly agree with what you're saying, Charlie. I know that taxes are painful, but at the same time, we have a lot of infrastructure in the community that oh, has know. been that can has been kicked down the road a long ways. And but, you know but we're but faced with a. All these things that you've got there, they've been kicked down the road. Uh, I think some have and some haven't. Well, the taxpayers what? approved this money once already, Charlie. That's right. So now you're saying, take it back because we haven't spent it. No. That that is what you're saying. Because the end of the fiscal year, <coughs> the fiscal year ends June 30th. I know. That much money left over. It used to be you could not encumber that money. No, I know. I, it was only the highway department that could be encumbered. Exactly. Said, the state of Vermont, uh, in their in wisdom, said everything can now be encumbered, every department. Okay, so that's why our budgets are continually, every year, spiraling out of control. And it's just, and I know our town side is only about 16% of our budget, maybe, tops. About that, yeah. <clears throat> That's why, just so I can speak on why I wrote this and and asked the select board to consider it is, I understand that, and with the price of, you know, we've had these conversations, Charlie, you know, the price of everything goes up, and um, the more we, we don't do this stuff, then we have to put it into a future budget, and the cost of it's going to, it might not be, maybe you don't decide to do it for two years, um, and then the cost of it goes up even more, and and I'm a taxpayer, so I would say the way that I would look at this is um, I've already paid this money, and I'd rather have you do work with it than pass it into a future budget. Because if you, if you let it go into the general fund and you don't use it, and it goes back to a surplus that goes into uh, to apply to the tax rate, and we still have to get some of this work done, you're still going to have to put it in a budget somewhere. And, and then it'll be a higher, and, and a higher rate. If, if, if he, if two he, years down the road. So, so, like, for instance, going back to the police budget, terms, you get fifty some thousand dollars from the school department. Yeah, right? but did but that, that come out? Of, did, no. So the budget that we all we some voted and some didn't. I personally voted for it, but 
So that, that police budget that we voted for, whatever that number was, did that 50 some thousand, was that as anticipated revenue that was going to be coming out? Or did that get added back in? So now instead of that budget, let's say being 550,000, it's really 600,000. It, what, what, how it's, that, that contract is, it pays for all those salaries. So it's not being performed by an, a non-duty officer, right? I so, so we, so we're, we're providing a service to that the. That isn't what I'm asking. I'm asking, was that part of, was that part of an anticipated revenue? I've asked no. this question to you guys. <coughs> so I, that budget is, that budget is $56,000 more? No. Because we wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't, if the school wasn't paying for it, we wouldn't be doing it. Right, that's what I'm saying. It's a wash. So it's a wash because they pay every, they pay FICA, Medicare yeah. benefits. So it is, and the work being done, Charlie, is done by an officer that's not on duty. Right. So would, they're not getting paid otherwise. It only would, the money comes from that budget. What I'm saying is, so you're not doing it just for the town of Castleton, you're doing it for Benson and Orwell, too. Mm -hmm. And here, so. And Fairhaven. We're paying an, we're paying an officer. To, to go to Benson and Orwell. I don't care if they do it in Castleton, we should be doing it for our town. But other towns, like, when we go out and, and service, if, if Hubbardton doesn't have a police force and Pulte doesn't have a police force and we're going down there and backing it up or, or making the calls, yep. that's costing us taxpayers money, especially in these days when everything is so expensive. But I think we're talking two different things here. No, we're not talking two different things. It all leads to the same The thing. SRO thing was when, when an officer goes to the school. That's what we voted on tonight, the 50000 I understand that. 67. 67000 dollars So the school budget's pay I mean, we're all paying the school. That was in the school budget that we voted for. Yeah. Above and beyond the budget to pay the schools pay that, right? Well, we pay it. Right. It was in the school budget that we either voted for or against last week. But it's an off-duty officer, so it's not part of the town police budget. But we're still, it's miles on the cars. Uh, they pay all fuel. that. They pay, they pay. They pay fuel, miles, Havica, Medicare benefits, and wages. It's all factored in. That's why. That's why we do it because we weren't even going to bring it before the board if we were. If they. If there's any chance that the taxpayers of Castle would be paying a dime towards it. And what but, happens if something happens at that school and that officer has to go to court and you're only getting a lump sum? So if that <coughs> officer goes to court, who pays for that debt? It but most likely will come out of the, that school resources budget because it. Honestly, at the end of the year, they always have a surplus of that budget. We give them money back. So there is money built in for administrative services. There's contingency built into that contract, Charlie. We have given money back, too. We have. Yeah, we've, we've, we've given like $12,000 back. I think they, they went high to, as a precautionary thing, but um, what we actually use each year is less than what. Okay, Roy. Do you have a, um, a figure yet for uh, a surplus? This year, or is there going to be one? That's why I'm still working on it because we're. It hasn't gone. I, I I just went through this with our accountant. Um, it's posted through end of May right now. The, the, our, our accounting software, and so I backed out a lot of the stuff that artificially increased that budget, like 104,000 for paving for ARPA. Even though it gets charged off to the um, against an expense on the highway department, it's paid for by ARPA. ARPA, but for accounting purposes, it's built in to their budget, so I got to back it out. And when I, that's what I've been working on because we're we're over three we're three hundred and thirty thousand dollars of ARPA that was put into the budget that I got to back out. So we're we're looking at over two hundred and something thousand dollars of a surplus right now. We we typically have a surplus, Roy. It's hard to until the books are closed for the end of June, which they are not. We're at May right now, right? Yeah, right now. And um, it's hard to know what the anticipated surplus will be. And then it has to be audited and stand up to an audit before it's official. So we won't have an official surplus number until sometime in August or September. Does that earliest, sound right? Earliest, yeah. yeah. Have you and any discussion yet as to what, the what you might want to do with that surplus? That's what this paperwork is all about. Well, with, when, when we know what the surplus is, we have two options. The two options are we can either ask the voters for permission to spend it on a specific item, like we did a couple of years ago for the salt and sand shed, or we let it roll over into income and use it to reduce the tax rate, which this year is probably going to be my first choice. But I'm only one of five, so. 
how do you, if the bills have gone out um, in July, how do you adjust that if you do do that? The tax rate that we're bill billing for in this coming fiscal year was set last year, correct? Yeah, but we're gonna, you're gonna, in July, you're gonna set the new tax rate. Um, and we're, we're waiting the school, the, this whole, by the 25th of July is like the last, the drop dead date the school has to make a decision. Um, and we'd have to probably set the preliminary tax rate um, and then have to send amended bills out if we tried to do this. If we tried to, if we tried to send it out early um, before the end of July, then it'd be a preliminary tax bill and then there has to be adjustments, which there's a cost associated with all that stuff too. So talking today, like what would be the detriment to the town if we waited to the first meeting in August to do it? Um, and really there's, there's really not too much of a detriment because the August 1st is when, August 1st to the 31st is the tax period and then you get a 30 day grace period. So if we're, I think we're gonna be, we'll be good. We've done it in the past, so it's not like we're poor and we're gonna not have any money. Well, and to, to further answer the question that came up, the tax rate that we set this coming July is based on the surplus that we had when, from the fiscal year that was closed in June 30th of 2022. That surplus is audited. Yes, that's the way it works, Charlie. We can't set a tax rate on information we don't have yet. And we won't know the audited surplus until August or September at best. So that's the way of, since I've been on the board for the last 10 years, that's how it's been done. How it happened 20 years ago, I don't know, but I do know that's how it's been done the last 10 years. Yeah, what we've done in the past is once the fiscal year closes and the tax rate set, um, we'll have a number. Um, it's usually pretty accurate. Uh, Melanie was really good about, you know, getting those numbers pretty accurate. Um, and then when the audited numbers come in, it, it could change. So any more discussion from the board on this resolution? I'm good. So I'm gonna call the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 5-0. Manager's report. The abbreviated version? Please. In, pending your questions. Um, okay. Um, I have one, but we'll take it offline tomorrow. All right. Um, uh, the update uh, for on the uh, pedestrian uh, bike and pedestrian grant for Parsons Hills. I signed the contract. I received a, a message back today um, that next week um, we're looking at setting uh, an update because there's some st stuff that Champlain Construction still has to meet with VTrans over is the the whole right of way and that process. So we're going to try to set up a meeting next week to just make sure everything's locked in there and try to have a uh, build or I'm sorry uh, construction start date um, back for me back to the board um, by the um, first meeting in July. Just to be able to say, we've, we discussed it, we're good to go, and this construction is going to start on X date. But the way the contract's written, it has to be done this year anyway. You'll know in two weeks' time you'll give us a construction start date? Yeah, that's that's what we're working on is to get a construction start date. In two weeks? Yeah. Okay. Well, not, I'm not saying the construction will start in two weeks. I'll give you the answer to when it will start. Yeah, when it's going to start. Yeah, all the time frame? Yeah. Yes. That's right. Yeah. Good. I'm skipping past some of the things on the like sewer because you've already addressed them and approved the the uh, the items that are in the in this report. The uh, insertion valve was on here. Mm -hmm. You guys already approved that for the uh, main pump station. Um, I don't have a start date yet. I'm on page number nine. Uh, highway department um, paving. Um, don't have a date yet from Wilkes on Blissville Road. Um, but as soon as I have it, we'll make sure we get it out to the public and advance notice. Um, so they know 
when it's going to start. It will, the road will never be closed as far as um, like it'll be open to single lane traffic during work and at night and that kind of stuff. So it's not going. There's no plans to try to close the road. Where does Blissville stop as far as Castleton is con concerned? Um, if, if you're traveling towards Pulteney on Blissville Road, you know where Mary Lane is. Mm -hmm. So you go up the hill, you know, go past Mary Lane. It goes up the hill and kind of twist and turn a little bit towards the top of that hill. Is up there and there. There's a is the town line. The speed right limit the sign at the top of that hill. Yeah. There's a town line. There's okay. an old cemetery there. Okay. Uh, no change to the trucks at the highway department. Uh, we still have one down um, for a Warren Kingpin, and um, new tires will be ordered for two of the trucks after July 1st. Um, the water truck, the brake issue that they had has been fixed. Um, that was the one they were using to chloride the roads. Um, it had a, a brake line had to be replaced. Uh, so that's back in operation now. Um, the New Holland um, mower was fixed locally by R&D. Um, they had to vacuum it out, vacuum the um, the system and recharge it and it was that was working great now. The R and D was able they had the tools in it, the machine that which was capable of doing it. So it's it, that's back in service um, for for that. But the the blade um, on the, the cutting blades um, that has not been resolved yet um, with Capital Tractor to uh, diagnose that the I didn't hear back from Evan today, but they ordered a solenoid lo locally, and they were going to try that first. And it was a $50 part, and that was the cheapest, most inexpensive way uh, to die, you know, troubleshoot. Um, and if that fixed it, we'd be good. But I haven't heard if it fixed it or not. If not, it's going to be more expensive, and it'll go to Capital Tractor. Well, you know, let me know, please. I will. I'll, I'll, I'll I try to email you guys with stuff that's going on, so I, I'll, I'll include it out there, everybody. Um, Uh, that paving project uh, on page 11, the paving project that VTrans had um, scheduled for uh, 2025 has been now delayed um, into 2026 or 27, and that's the section of Class One Highway from Blissville or from Sand Hill Road to the, the bridge on the east side of town, past the old fuel, um, built, past the train station. Um, so now they're saying it's not going to be done until. 2026 or 27 and I asked if they would include the um, shoulder widening project and um, I didn't get I got told highly unlikely that they're not V trans isn't doing that right now um, so using the bike and pedestrian grant for the village was not leverage at all and my in my opinion um, because of the stormwater stuff that's going to go on in the village, that <coughs> paving that and then tearing it back up is not a good business model. So uh, this will actually delay it so we can work on the stormwater issues before it gets paved. So it's actually probably better in the long run. I provided the board on the updated ARPA um, worksheet. Um, I added in that money that you appropriate or you uh, yeah appropriated for the um, Parsons Hills project into that, so I think you have an updated copy. You got the police vehicle policy, um, the assistance to firefighters grant. I forwarded you guys an email, um, basically from Lexapol, the one that did the help with the grant writing, um, and basically said that um, it passed peer review and now it's going for a desk review, and we may not hear. Even though it, it, we haven't heard it, heard nothing right, we've heard nothing right now saying we, we weren't approved, but that could come along. The denial letter could come along with. Um, the uh, award um, not, uh, award um, notifications later, um, but it was a pretty well written grant. So hopeful, hopeful that it's um, it'll be accepted. Um, Chief Goyette um, informed me today that um, the ladder truck from Forest Grove Volunteer Fire Department was not delivered as it was supposed to this past weekend, um, and it's back at Sutphin or it's at Sutphin. Um, 
getting some paint put on it. I guess the paint peeled off it on the front. So it's there, Chief Aguayat's working with the chief out there to um, get a new date of when it'll be ready. We were supposed to go out on the 1st and 2nd of July, um, but that looks like it may be off the table now. But we'll still move forward with um, making sure that we have it insured and figure out the, the whole plate to move it stuff. Um, and the plan was to drive engine two out there and bring that to Har Robs, then go to from Har Robs to Forest Grove or um, Ewing Mills and 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 one day and then um, stay overnight and then drive the truck, the new ladder truck from Forest Grove Volunteer Fire Department to Har Robs. And we'll just trail it with the pickup from the garage. Um, but eventually that's what will happen. It's just not going to happen on the timeline that was originally, um, that, that Chief Goyette thought was going to happen. Does that ladder truck have to go to Har, Har, Har Robs? And that's where it's going to get painted, decaled. The ladder truck we're doing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And engine two is part, they took that in trade or give us money that will take the, off the bill for the work that they're doing okay. for the ladder truck. Uh, on page uh, 18 under town lands Crystal Haven common area um, I reached back out uh, I talked to Rob uh, about this um, he, he had sent me an email this was about uh, Laura DeLugalecki's opinion on who has jurisdiction over a dock that's over the water the, the, like you get the part that touches the, the shore and then you got that's, that's over the water and basically I, did, I got a second letter or email back from her that her belief is that the town has no jurisdiction over the length of a dock. It has to meet the state compliance and it's 50 feet. Um, but like the width and length, um, we can't, like our, our dock space agreement says four by 12. And by reading her email, it doesn't sound like once it's over the water, we really have no jurisdiction on it. Who does have jurisdiction? state but the question that Robert wrote back is like so can the town legally tell a person they, they have to put their dock on their boat on this side of the dock or that side of the dock or you know that kind of stuff so because that's what we were dealing with with the last complaint was people were encroaching on someone else's space um, it was a the it was a pretty simple or amicable um, fix because the person that had the boat agreed to move it um, but the next person could say no <coughs> and we're and and if we have no jurisdiction over it and they thumb their nose at us um, then we may not have any grounds to stand on but she did say if our legal if we had if we end up talking to legal counsel on this um, if if anything is in um, conflict with what she said to let her know but right now it, the, it was fixed um, but this comes around every single year. So no, knowing where, I guess knowing where the select board's authority is um, when, or for the portion of the dock over the, that extends over the water, we should know that. And that's it, barring your questions. Any questions from the board? That's Allison. Does it have to be in regards to the manager's part? Mm, not necessarily. <coughs> right, it's under the purview of manager's responsibilities. Uh, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll wait to uh, select for comments and concerns. All right, and I have a question for the town manager. I did not have an original in the blue folder of this resolution 2401. All right. So can we just pass around my copy to sign? Will that be adequate? Yeah, or do you need an original? We stamped the original on it. Yeah, there's nothing in here. There's only the three grant documents, which we do not need to sign. Only you need to. Is that correct? Yeah, when you authorize it, did you authorize? Yes, we did. Yeah, then I'll just sign those. But as far as that goes, if you have a clean copy that's nothing's written on, you I can do. use that as the original because we're going to stamp the original signature copy as original. So I'm going to pass this around while we're... Moving on to 
Purchase orders. Mr. Steele, would you do the honors? All right. Thanks, Bob. I would make a motion to approve purchase order 052111 to Casella Construction for the sum of $7,744.79 for, looks to be crushed stone. It was the, yes, for the library. The library. Yep. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Oh, a second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 I would make a motion to approve purchase order 052118 to Wilk Paving for the sum of $13,000. One hundred and eighteen dollars and eighty-six cents for paving the parking area at Castleton Library and uh, Elm Street Patch. I'll also, second that. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Did you miss them, the Trees Incorporated one? Yeah, you did skip over that, Rob. Uh, He's you got it right here. He's got all four. Okay. Oh, I was looking at the box. Well, I was just looking at oh, yeah. He's, He's, not doing, He's doing them in the order of the stack. Okay. I would make a motion to approve purchase order 052113 for the, or Two Trees Incorporated for the sum of $5,250 for, I'm assuming, tree trimming on Frisbee Hill Road. Great. I'll second that. Been moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 There might be one less up there now. No, we got four. No, Heath, the one that fell on Frisbee Hill Road <laughs> this weekend. So. No, that one was behind the wires. So. Oh, was it? Uh, oh. I would make a motion to approve purchase order 052444 to VFIS, care of M&T Bank, for the sum of $32,247 for the annual incentive package. Did you say fire department on that? You need to see fire department, yeah. That's all. I'll second that. For the fire department? Yeah. Fiscal year 24, 25. I'm gonna recuse myself on this. Has it been, has it been seconded? I did. All in favor? Aye. 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 You can initial it. Oh, okay. Just initial it? Well, they didn't initial it. I actually received funding from that. I'm in the. I'm actually receiving retirement now, Mark. It's not a lot, but me too. How are you? I didn't know you were as old as I am. Sixty-six. How old are you? Sixty-seven. I'm not as old as you. It's true. <laughs> You're much younger now. Just my initials. Or my initials and date. Okay, That's I, got, I, I got the do. date there. Yeah. You Technically, I don't make more or less if this gets approved or whatever, but, what, you know. You ready for the next one, Dick? Um, I don't have another one. I Forest do. Grove? Yeah. Oh, yes, I do. Sorry. I would make a motion to approve purchase order 052439 to Forest Grove Volunteer Fire Department for $238,500 for the balance <coughs> of the 2001... Um, what is it? Suffin, Suffin. TS-95 Aerial. I'll yeah. second it, but to come out of the reserve account, should that be? It comes out of the reserve account. Yep. To come out of the reserve account. Okay. It has to. I'll second it. Any discussion on this? All in favor? Aye. 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 This one area. It's got to go with the mark. Thank you. Who wants to do the warrants? Rob's on a roll. Yep. I would make a. Can I do them all at once? Yes. Uh, make a motion to approve. Warrant number 0624R for 238500 Warrant 0620 
for one million eight hundred and thirty seven thousand two hundred and twenty one dollars and thirty nine cents warrant number zero six two four for the sum of one hundred and forty three thousand thirty one dollars and seventy four cents warrant number zero six one three p for the sum of twenty thousand five hundred and sixty six dollars and seventy eight cents and warrant number zero six two zero p for the sum of twenty one thousand four hundred and ninety four dollars and eighty five cents i'll second it's been moved and seconded any discussion all in favor aye aye, aye. The big one is for the quarterly school payment. Had to look at that one twice. I'm not used to reading numbers that That's big. That's a big number, <laughs> 1.7 1. mil. That's our quarterly payment. Last quarter for this year, though, right? Is that right? Well, yeah. we do it four times a year. I'm not sure what fiscal year is what. Oh, that. that's true. That's true. Usually at the last one, they do a true up, too. Yeah. Um, Mr. Chairman, while you guys are signing that, can I uh, have an alibi? <clears throat> uh, why do you need an alibi? Something I didn't include. I, I think I sent you an email today, but the public wouldn't know it. And I haven't seen my emails today. I've been busy. It was about the MERP grant for the highway garage. I saw there was an email, but to be honest, I was on the road and I didn't read it. So, well, they we got the assessment back for the highway garage for that MERP grant. Yep. And um, if you read the assessment it's pretty porous building so um, I asked the question does this how do I know if the town's eligible to apply for the construction part of it and they said if you got the assessment back you're eligible for the construction part so but that that application hasn't been released yet but so that means that we can uh, I haven't seen anything on the village school yet but the for right now the the highway garage would call it qualifies to apply for the MERP grant, which is up to $500,000 with no match for energy efficiencies and that kind of stuff. That would be nice. Yeah. It would be better for the village school, but... Take what we can get. Yeah. Maybe we'll get both. That would be very nice. So where did that original for the um, resolution wind up? Did Mike... Did you get that, Mike? No, I don't have it. It was circulating. Give it to Mark. The what? Mark's probably got it. He's hoarding it over there. I'll put that in the blue folder. Not till I sign it. I did sign it already. Yeah, you were the first one after me. Okay. I'm going to put it in the blue folder so it doesn't turn out missing. Good idea. I don't have a stapler here, but we, I also have... Um, I received notification about the... Uh, we got $249,000 grant uh, for the wastewater uh, because we finished that project, the $2.5 million project. So this grant is for clean water, clean drinking water stuff. It's part of a, the whole SRF process um, for $249,000. So um, I'm assuming you yeah, see if there's a place to sign it. My name's on it. We, the undersigned parties, agreed to bound by this agreement, State of Vermont. So it must be, I'll have to look, it must have been something that was part of the, when we first applied, but they got my name on it. I don't know if you guys want to, how you want to handle it, because I didn't bring it up during the sewer commissioner's meeting. Well, we're going to have to have a sewer commissioner's meeting, the next select board meeting, to set the sewer rate. All right. Okay. And if it's not time sensitive, make sure we're right up to speed and we can. I will. What we need to do at that point? That that reduces the the payment, the bond payment to eighty one thousand, which I included in the sewer budget. So this grant reduced it by eight, or was it, it brought it down to five the five fifty eight from five ninety eight, so forty bucks. The sewer yes. rate, but it brought the <coughs> the loan payment down ten percent, right? Yeah. You got all five, Rob? I think so. All right, so we're going to move on. Select board comments. Mark. Uh, I have two drive-bys I'd like to throw out. Um, I thought about this for a while, and then a resident brought it up to me. 
you know, things have changed so much. Tom mentioned about Amazon trucks and UPS trucks, and we have a lot of delivery trucks in town now. Most of them are well identified, but some are not. There's a lot of subcontractors. Even the U.S. Postal Service, I see a, a guy with New York plates and an old Chevy truck delivering mail on my road. You'd have no idea who he was. Um, I had a woman tell me she was coming home and there was a Toyota parked in front of her house and a guy standing on the porch taking a picture of her front door and she was pretty freaked out but he was an Amazon subcontractor and they leave the package and take a picture. But without identification on cars I think that that can be intimidating to uh, you know I always sound chauvinist and I don't mean it but I think that for women that are living alone, this is an intimidating thing, and I think that it's our responsibility to make sure that they're not put in that situation. And I would like us not to make a motion tonight, but to think about an ordinance that required uh, contractors that were doing residential deliveries in the town of Castleton to have identification, name of the company, and a phone number on their door. You, know, so door. you look at your neighbor, somebody pulls into your neighbor's house, you know, are they supposed to be there or not? Yeah. You I've know, had that red Chevy truck come to my house on a Sunday. It's happening more and more every day. So I'd like everyone to think about that. The other call I had, and I drove up there and looked at it, if you go up Drake Road from 4A, um, once you cross Route 4, there are a lot of walkers that come from Indian Bay and also on Drake Road itself. And it's pretty dark, you know, you make that right-hand corner and go through the trees, and people really drive fast through there. Could we put signage up that said something to the effect of, you know, congested pedestrian area? There's, there's not much shoulder. And uh, actually, someone said they saw you going 50 up through there, Bob. I don't know if that's true. That was out here, <laughs> Mr. Brown. I admitted to going 50 out here. <laughs> But there are a lot of people that walk on that road, and I'd, I'd like to see them have a little bit more protection than they have right now. Traffic goes pretty fast. Take a drive up there. You'll see what I mean. Well, I've driven up there recently and made sure that I took my foot off the accelerator as soon as you get over Route 4 and over that hill and you start down the hill. And you think about, you know, you're doing 35 miles an hour, but if you don't take your foot off the throttle, you're going to be going 40 real quick. Yeah, it gets dark and in I the have, trees, and there's a lot of people there. And I have I forced myself to think about it going through there now. When I'm going up to see Todd or something, you know, and that's been that not to take anything away what you just said, Mark, but that's been brought to this board before by a certain resident up there, and she speaks to me all the time about that, and I just I don't bring it to the board all the time, but she's been into these meetings and said the same thing. Really? Yeah. There's <clears throat> people walking from Route 30 up Drake Road, down Drake Road, down the side road there. And there's a lot of residences. You know, from Drake Road towards the lake, there's a lot, a lot of houses there, and people do walk on that road a lot. There's no shoulder. There's no shoulder. Let's look into what a little more signage up there would think do for us or to us. Yeah, we have to find a place where you put it where there's actually a shoulder because <laughs> yeah. I, I realize <laughs> the, the post out. will be 75 feet long. <laughs> Get to the sign will be in the road. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? That's it. Bob? Is there AC in the village school? Did, what does that have for air conditioning? The old part of the building has nothing, and there is a there is a heat pump in the front part, the, like the library area. That's it? Yeah. Okay. Something we need to think about if we're going to be in there 24-7, 365? Yeah, it got brought to my attention the other day. Um, John talked to me about some, um, some larger fans to move air right now. Okay. Um, as a as a stopgap to at least get some air circulating. Sure. So well, I just thought with your with the town wide yard sale in the gym, like, oh my god, it's gonna be ninety degrees. What do they have for Yeah, yeah, I think that's what they're talking about. The fans about is uh one of the volunteers that was the the one of the industrial size fan. Yeah, that's that's what we're looking that at. That certainly helps. We, we got some stairs of the garage that we're not using, so John said he could. I thought there was a new air handler on that building, no? In the front part, there's um, a, a new air handler, but the old part, they're not. there's no power going to them at, at all. And this, else, yeah, there's one other subject. It's going to be a little sticky, I think. <clears throat> Maybe not sticky tonight, but um, the turnaround, 
next to the Federated Church. Yep. It's been ripped up and seated. Mm -hmm. Who made that decision to do that? Oh God, I brought that to the. I let the board know that like over a year. That 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 was like a year or over a year delayed from happening. Really? Because we we maintained it. We we plowed it. So um, I I went to to Mr. Rail and I said. It's, it's one of those things that where a truck with dirt has to come back and because it's it wasn't paved and i said what do, what do you think about paving and he said how about how about you take it out and in, in turn we he would let us use some of that property for that that uh, green area um, for where that ethan allen statue and i had made a proposal about bringing the more the war monuments over to that so we have like one central area so that was god that was I think we were over. He's about, there was uh, probably over a year delayed of, of making it happen. So, but I, I brought that to the board. Like, so if you go back and look at your manager reports, probably over, go back a year and a half ago. I can't look at the ones you sent every week to us. <laughs> Twelve to sixteen pages. Okay, I must have missed that. I, I got some unhappy residents over there. That who the hell made that decision? Is what their exact words were to me. I said I don't really remember. What, what's the what's the re, what's their complaint though? Because they have nothing else to complain about? I don't know. I don't know. It's grass now rather than dirt. Does it belong to the town or does it belong to John Raylan? We own most of it. There's the, most the, of it? The section where it entered off from Route 4A was part is his. So it was only part of it was his and the rest of it, the town, it was town green. Okay. So He said, he said long as long, if you're going to take that drive away, then at least on the... Federated Church that he had access into that apartment or that house from off that Federated Church. Yep. Yep. I understand that. Okay. Okay. That's it. Mary Lee? I'm fine. Bob? I'm good. I'm good. Anybody have any action items that we need to remember? <clears throat> Mike's got his traditional list. It's actually a pretty short list this meeting. How come he's not commenting? We need a. No, I was thinking about some of the stuff like because one of them is going to be that the, the ease, deed stuff for. Yeah. Um, that's going to be that's the probably heavy more, lift. That's that's the most tedious one probably. Um. Yeah, but it's also going to be have to be on the short list, I think. Mm -hmm. Um. Do we need an executive session for anything? Come on, Mike. It's only quarter after ten. Yeah. Um, I'm going to move on if I don't get something quick. I'd move on. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn I'll at 1015. Do I have a second? I'll, I'll second, second it. Somebody second it. Thank Charlie, you, can you stick around for a second? All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat>